HIV and AIDS related drugs. HIV is an RNA retrovirus. Um, it's unable to survive without human living cells. Uh, it destroys CD4 and T cells. The destruction of these uh, define it along with um, a, having a couple of diseases that coincide with it symptomatically. Um, This just represents a, a pictogram of the HIV life cycle. HIV can be transmitted through sexual contact, direct, blo direct blood contact, mother to child contact through breast milk um, and childbirth. Uh, breast milk is a lower risk, but it is still a risk. Vaginal fluids, semen, blood, and breast milk all contain HIV. Laboratory testing, CD4 T cell counts. Um, plasma HIV RNA quantitative analysis, uh, HIV resistance testing, and additional laboratory evaluation. So there are staging and classification systems by the CDC and the World Health Organization. The CDC includes CD4 counts as well as symptomatic um, disease variables that go with it. The World Health Organization looks at disease variables and symptoms. Treatments of ART, which is anti-retro uh, therapy. Uh, we want to reduce HIV-associated morbidity and mortality, prolong the duration and quality of life, restore and preserve immunologic function, and maximally and durably suppress plasma HIV and viral load. Prevention of HIV transmission is also important. Indications for antiretroviral therapy. HIV-infected individuals um, will, will receive this. Um, those that are pregnant um, can still receive it. Um, history of AIDS-defining illness, especially under that World Health Organization. Um, HIV-associated nephropathy or a hep B co-infection um, ups a person's um, need for this. So antiretroviral agents, one type of antiretroviral is a reverse transcriptase inhibitor. NRTIs are, are a type of those. These are nucleoside, nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. They direct act right on the nucleoside nucleotide um, to stop the reverse transcription. They do stop some regular transcription too. The NRTIs are taken with food except for didanazine, which should be taken one hour before or two hours after meals. There are many side effects. Um, the NNRTIs are um, a little bit different. They're non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. They often work on the on mechanisms that assist with um, that assist with reverse transcription of the nucleotide nucleoside molecule, um, and by doing that, they kind of indirectly stop that transcription from happening. Um, antiretroviral agents, protease inhibitors, are currently FDA approved. Um, so these are another kind of indirect way of stopping those um, HIV viruses from continuing to multiply. Entry fusion inhibitors, things like Nfuvirtide. Um, just an FYI, Virtide or um, Virene or Virdine or Virens, these kinds of things are virapine. Um, these kinds of things are usually antiretrovirals. This um, enfuvirtide is specifically an entry fusion inhibitor. It's the only agent approved in this class. Um, there are some others, the CCR5 agonists. You can read, around, read about Miraviron, Miraviric. Um, but some severe side effects can include upper respiratory infection, cough, pyrexia, um, and then also um, hepatotoxicity. 
Um, we, there are integrase inhibitors. There are some side effects with this that are um, tolerable in order to stop the viral load and lower the viral load. Um, side effects include headache, pyrexia, nausea, and diarrhea. So there's something called the immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome, and we need to talk about this at this point. Related to specific opportunistic pathogens experienced by a low percentage of patients in early um, antiretrotherapy, there are two distinct entities. There's a paradoxical iris, which is an exacerbation um, of the treated opportunistic infection, um, and then there is an unmasking iris, which is a response to undiagnosed or um, subclinical um, opportunistic infection. The nurse's role in antiretroviral therapy um, is to assist the patient in um, developing a patient-centered care plan um, <laughs> to increase drug regimen adherence. Non-adherence results in increased viral replication and loads. Um, immune system deterioration and drug resistance. Um, adherence to this, um, we want to promote patient adherence by, um, of course, patient-centered care. We want to make sure that they understand each medication and their purpose. They know if they should be taking them with or without food and if there are food and fluid restrictions to um, various types. Um, storage of medication, appropriate recording sheet, and contact persons for the questions. We always use the um, nursing process in this. Um, some of the most common HIV-related opportunistic infections include TB, bacterial pneumonia, and sepsis, PCP pneumonia, toxoplasmosis, cryptosporidiosis, and um, leishmaniasis. Fungal would be candidiasis. Uh, cryptococcosis, viral would be cytomegalovirus, herpes, uh, both simplex and zoster, and then um, some associated malignancies, which are not really opportunistic infections, but they're opportunistic malignancies, would be Kaposi's sarcoma, lymphoma, and squamous cell carcinoma. Antiretroviral drug therapy in pregnancy, timing of initiation of the treatment, and the selection of regimens for pregnant patients may differ from those for non-pregnant adults or adolescents. Goal is to prevent mother-to-child transmission. A patient infected with HIV can transmit the virus during pregnancy, labor, and delivery um, and through breastfeeding. Uh, post-exposure, um, so there's post-exposure um, prophylaxis regimens. You should know this as a healthcare worker. Um, some adverse reaction rates are very high, 17 to 47%, most common being nausea, malaise, and fatigue. Um, and then you can practice these practice questions online as they're posted. They do have um, answers for you. Uh, best wishes.